Welcome back to The Grind for a detailed guide on the Karina's Challenge O Canada, where you have to go through Labyrinth of Legends with a team that only has Canadian tag. Now, the absolute best way is to do this with Sabretooth and the Sasquatch Synergy. Now, the other synergies that I recommend are Old Man Logan, uh, Wolverine, as well as Guardian, and we'll talk about why. I think the Old Man Logan one gives you a chance to be unblockable on your medium attacks, which can really help you get attacks in without parrying and without having to intercept. And Guardian is nice because it gives you three perfect blocks, and we'll see how that can come into play. Now, the first thing I want you to notice here is Old Man Logan is actually a five star. And this was actually the last thing that I noticed after completing the challenge and seeing that I didn't get my rewards and then double checking the team that I had brought with me. And that's because I used this synergy tab to pull in Old Man Logan and it took in the highest rarity. So do not make this mistake and double check before you start because that really stings and I almost didn't have the motivation to make this video. So the first step in this is to get as many persistent charges for Sabretooth as you can and it is a random amount or a random chance to get between three to six at the start of the fight. So when you go in with zero persistent charges, you'll start off with a certain number of these persistent charges and this time it was four. Now I wanted to get five or six before I started my run so I backed out and I went back in, uh, restarted the quest, and went in. And I actually used about two bars of energy. Um, and all that time was just getting three or four persistent charges until finally I ended up getting five. And so I just ran with it. But So this is what you do. You keep repeating this process um, if you would like to. I really highly recommend getting at least five or six persistent charges as a safety net. And then we went in and started the fight. And this time it was only three. And so I had to quit and start over again. Now these persistent charges are what allow you to carry over your furies from fight to fight. And with the Sasquatch synergy, you can throw a special three to gain a persistent charge, which allows you to essentially permanently keep all those furies throughout the entire path, unless you happen to mess up and die before throwing your first special three. So you can see here, we have five persistent charges, so we're running with it. Now the first step is to play cautiously and get to a special three. The absolute most important first thing you want to do in each fight is get to a special three and not get hit in the face like that. The nice thing is if you are full health or heal up the opponents don't have that much attack power now let's talk about banking furies you can bank furies with your special one but at first you want to go to a special three an alternative way to bank a fury is by dashing back and pausing for one second and that will convert an active fury into a passive fury and once you throw your first special three in the fight you can start banking furies with your special one which i will show you but here um, what i recommend is parrying and if you have three of those perfect block charges you'll You'll have a very long parry and when you throw your special three there will be a good amount of the stun left at the end which makes it very easy to bank the fury from the special three which is a more potent fury by almost two times and if you dash back and wait for it to convert into passive it makes it easier with that uh, perfect block increased stun duration and ideally you want to bank as much of these as possible but you don't want to go out of your way to do it now how i did for the first um couple fights because you can bank five furies in a match uh, up to 15 after that you can't bake any more during the match so for the first 15 when I would go in uh, the first five I would go to a special three for the first one for my fail safe and then I would go to a second special three to bank another pa uh, special three fury now here take note dashing in the medium went unblockable this has come in so handy throughout the whole run when I couldn't get the opponent over a bar of power or if they were playing passive it can really come in handy so I really like that synergy now this is still the first fight and I didn't bother throwing too many special ones or special twos because the damage really isn't quite worth it and so how you want to end the fight to bank extra furies is to end with a special three and then pause the fight immediately because the furies that you have when you end the fight which counts when you quit the fight will actually turn passive as well so here right after the special three we have a strong fury from the special three and a weaker fury from crossing 10 hits on the combo meter so now we've paused the fight and we're going to quit we had five passive furies and those two active furies so now when we go back into the fight we're going to see seven passive furies that are now banked and this is how you want to end every fight until you get to 30 passive furies so now you can see we have seven 
starting this fight. And the first thing we're going to do is work up to a special three and then start banking special three furies as much as we can. So you want to save those perfect block charges. Now I did mess up there and that hurt because I lost a persistent charge. And now we're skipping into the next fight. I got to the special three. So I had parried right before. And now coming out of the special three, I'm going to dash back and pause and hope he doesn't attack into me. Uh, unfortunately, he did. So I wasn't able to bank those furies. But you know what? That's okay. Um, at this point, I was actually over 15 furies anyways. So I couldn't bank them. Because as I said, once you're at 15 furies, you can't bank anymore during the fight. And here we're throwing the special one and showing that it does not bank that active fury into a passive fury. For the first couple fights, I do recommend building up to special threes to bank those furies because they are a bit more potent and it doesn't really slow the fight down. You're not dealing much damage anyways uh, at that point. So it holding your power to go up to another special three, I think is worth it. So now as you approach the end of the enrage timer, you want to make sure you're built up to three bars of power because you, again, you want to end the fight after a special three when you have those two furies so you can bank them. And that is how you will gain over 15 furies all the way up to 30 as the max amount of passive furies. So now we're starting off this fight again and we have 17 furies. And again, the first special three is the most important thing of every single fight for this entire run because you don't want to lose those persistent charges. So you want to play safe. You want to use your parries up early to make sure they don't evade on you. And then ending with a special three is to help ramp your damage. Now this fight against Thor Jane Foster, you need to remember not to attack into the block. As you can see, I did and I took some shock damage because I was so close to full health, I was able to survive it um, and that kept me from losing a persistent charge. Now I have literally no buffer, uh, so I have to play extremely cautious. I, on very rare occasions, will end a full five hit combo, and I primarily try to just end with a light attack so that if she evades the last hit, then I can dex back. And I recommend doing this for most fights. And in fact, you, if you have enough health, probably should mostly just do attacks while the parry stun is active until you get your first special three off because you really don't want to risk losing that persistent charge and it will take up all or most of your available parries but if you have the guardian synergy with that uh, perfect block then you'll get a lot longer stuns for the first three stuns and you can get um, two mediums and then a combo in after that. And then after you kind of use up all your parries, at least you've got your persistent charge saved and you can go to the primarily safe play style um, using without your parries, which is kind of challenging because oftentimes I'll attack into the block to give them power, but with Thor Jane Foster, you can't. So you really have to be careful. Try to bait heavies out without attacking into the block, uh, land parries when you can, and dexing out special attacks. And if you're not comfortable dexing the special one, then this fight might be a little bit harder and you might want to practice a little bit first, but there are ways to discourage them from using their specials and to bait out heavy attacks when you don't want them to use their specials. So sometimes I'll end my combo early and then hold block and then it oftentimes they'll throw a heavy attack. The same thing there, I held block and she threw a heavy attack. Here again, I held block uh, before I finished my combo and she threw another heavy attack. And you can get into these cycles when they either have no bars of power for you to bait out a special or when you want to push them to two bars instead of one bar, which is very helpful in the next fight against uh, Daredevil. Now, one of the helpful things for synergies is the Fury Extending Mastery because it gives you a longer duration on your special three Furies for when you're trying to build up your um, permanent Furies. Also, crit rate so that you'll crit more often and you'll get some nice big damage off of the special twos. Now the daredevil fight, whenever you hold block, you're going to get a passive degen on you. As you can see, it's ticking there. The higher health you are when you start the fight, the less damage it's going to do. So it also encourages healing up. However, it is fairly easy to avoid holding block for too long. Um, but sometimes you'll want to hold block to prevent him from throwing a special one. Um, and so that kind of throws a little bit of a kink into the mix. So you might not want to focus on that as much and try to land your medium unblockable hits uh, as a primary way to push him higher in bars of power. Now this Daredevil does not have the tenacity that the regular um, Daredevil will, but he does have the new animation, so his special ones are very long and it wastes a lot of time if you frequently bait out the special ones. That's why I frequently try to push him up to two bars as often as possible. Now I made it to three bars of power and I was able to get that persistent charge so I can now play a little bit less cautiously and focus on damage more so, trying to get quick intercepts and quick 
Drake in so I can get as many hits as possible and, you know, holding heavy briefly to try to encourage him to throw a heavy attack so I can keep pushing him up to two bars of power. That will make the special attack time much less significant and then I can continue to deal as much damage as possible. I focus mostly on special twos because of the big crit on the third hit. And here's another example of the unblockable special or medium attack that can help you control the opponent's power a little bit more easily. Now, uh, like I said, I focus mostly on special twos, especially in the tenacity fights like Venom Pool, for example, because you don't get the bleeds to stick. And the special one, I believe, activates more bleeds. And if you have deep wounds, you can get some decent damage out of that. But I really do think that the special two is the way to go when you have time to continue throwing those off because the potential crit on that third hit is just so big that the bleeds I don't think will make up for it and this fight can be very annoying because he can trigger a regeneration it actually procced three times on me I think I quit once because it was near the end of the fight but the other two I just fought through because the regen is only I believe it's only like two or three percent and you can take off a lot more than that in a fight with Sabretooth so what happens if it happens in the first round of the um, enrage timer, you have plenty of time still to deal that damage back, but if you're really low on health or if you're in a bad position backed up against the wall and you think you might die soon after, it would be better to cancel, uh, quit the fight at the beginning of the regen rather than try to fight it out. Now this regen here is a permanent regen, but it's only one tick each time or one health each tick, sorry. So you don't have to worry about that, but you can pause it and check and make sure he's not healing uh, thousands of health each time. Now this is the fight most people get worried about because of the regen and having to quit out before they get to a special three, but I would say if you haven't gotten to your special three yet, then you have plenty of time left to out damage the regen. And I would not quit out and lose a persistent charge just because he triggered a regen. I would push up to at least the special three before quitting out. If he procs another regen after that, then you can make that decision at a later time. The annoying part about this fight, as well as I believe two others, is the tenacity. And that is where you take a bigger risk on this short path because you can't use your parries to more safely get yourself up to that first special three. And if I was to, well, ha, I am going to have to do this path again. I really do think that I'm gonna take the longer path because of that fact, so I can utilize the parries more to get me to a special three more safely. Now, the thing to be aware of in this fight is whenever you take a blocked hit, he's going to steal some power. So it really helps to fuel his power and you wanna avoid that as much as possible. So you don't really wanna parry in this fight either. Now, his special one can be countered, but you have to be careful that you don't have too much distance when you try to counter it. And ideally, if he is already gonna be over a bar power by the time you counter, I would just not risk it. I try to bait out special ones because the special two can deal a lot of damage at certain stages. And if you're not comfortable fully dexing it, it's not worth the risk. So we played very safe to get our first special three off. And then we're gonna play a little bit more aggressively and we healed up to full. So he won't be dealing quite as much damage as if I had not healed. When he is below a bar of power, I was very aggressive with um, doing one, two or three hits into him and then dexing back because there's lots of time before he gets that bar of power. So I tried to get as aggressive as possible after getting off that first special three because it allowed me to get more damage in the fight. Now the next fight is Kamala Khan. The only thing about her is she has tenacity. Otherwise it's a very simple straightforward fight. She does gain furies so if you get clipped it can be devastating but her special one and special two are very easy to dex. Her heavy attack is also easy to outrange so this is a fairly straightforward fight. Another example of that old man Logan synergy coming in handy with that unblockable medium. She didn't have any power for me to bait out a special attack so I attacked into the block and it broke through the block so I could get a full combo in giving her more power and then baiting out the special attack and again as the enrage timer began to get lower and lower I would get more and more aggressive to get as much damage in as possible before it ran out knowing that if I messed up and died I didn't lose out on a lot of potential damage another example here of holding heavy attack to push them to throw a heavy attack so that I could then dex back and then go in for another full combo and then we can see a very nice big special two here. Unfortunately, it didn't all crit, but the first one crit and the last one crit and the last one is what matters. Now, the next fight is Rocket Raccoon, also a fairly straightforward fight. We're starting after we got to our special three and Rocket Raccoon, the main thing for him is if he gets to two bars of power, he's gonna go unblockable for the rest of the fight. So you don't want that to happen because it just makes the fight a little bit more challenging. You can parry this uh, during this fight. So if you need to, you can do that. Unfortunately, right now he was playing very passive into 
did not want to throw the special one, which is very annoying, especially because we can't really hit into his block too much at this point, because if we go unblockable, it will push him over two bars of power. So he finally threw the special one, and that allowed us to get back into the fight, and we did lose out on quite a bit of the enraged timer, unfortunately, but we were able to survive longer, so we were able to get more damage out of it. And he has very simple special one and heavy attack to deal with. The thing to keep in mind, though, is if you dex a little early, he covers a lot of range with his heavy attack and his special one. So you'll want to be a little bit cautious about that. If you dex back a little too early, then he might clip you on the first hit or second hit of his special one or his heavy attack. And then because we don't have to deal with tenacity, we can parry more freely and we get the added bonus of the bleed damage, which we do get some off of that special too. So that is very nice to have the little extra damage as well. And other than that, it's a fairly straightforward fight. And then we get to Maestro. Now, this is just like any other Maestro fight, except the fact that you're using a mutant champion, you don't have to deal with a whole lot of the added um, difficult things that happen as a result. The thing that you do have to deal with is if you hit into his block, you're going to lose some power, which is a bit annoying because I typically do uh, attack the opponent's block very often, as well as when I want to push him to two bars of power, it can be helpful to uh, dash into his block and then hold block briefly so he would throw a heavy attack, but you had to balance the risk of doing that with losing power, uh, especially at the start of the fight because you need to get to that first special three, as with all other fights. So it was really important to me to heal up to full or close to it for this fight as well because I wanted to make sure that he would not throw the special one. So I would hold block and just take the blocked hits if I needed to and that way I would be more confident knowing he wasn't going to throw the special one although he did throw it while holding block a couple times and I had some clutch dexes of the special one but I also had once or twice where I did get clipped or it hit my block and I got the degen. So you don't want that to happen, especially if you've already taken some chip damage, especially as he's lower health because he starts to get the furies and gets some increased damage. And then after the special three, we can again be a little bit more aggressive, but still using those same strategies to try to push him up to two bars of power as much as possible. Another mastery I think would be helpful for this run is limber because you will inevitably at some point get clipped and get stunned. And if you have that mastery on, it lasts so much shorter, you can actually recover, but the stun is otherwise so long that it can really mess you up, even if they're not dealing quite as much damage. Uh, some of the champions do have some increased damage modifiers with the furies and stuff, so uh, it can be helpful to have that mastery on and maxed out. Now you can see I only have two persistent charges because I did mess up on a several occasions or had an unlucky evade early in the fight. And unfortunately, halfway through the maestro, I had another time where he evaded and countered me right away early before I could get off my special three. So I was playing with one persistent charge. And before we skip ahead to the kind of the end of the fight, I wanted to highlight here again, me holding block to prevent him from throwing the special one, baiting heavies, and then pushing him over two bars of power. And then after this, building up to two bars and for the special three as well, waiting until I push him just under one bar of power. There's that long stun that I was talking about without the limber mastery. So he's just under one bar of power. Now I'm gonna go in for a full combo and throw the special two, which is going to push him over two bars of power. And that's another way to help control the opponent's power. Now we're skipping ahead towards the end of the fight. This is after we throw off our first special three to gain back our persistent charge. And then we're gonna go into our damage. And as you can see, we're down to just this one persistent charge. So we do not want to lose it. Now uh, in this uh, section of the fight, he's gonna gain some of those furies. So even hits into the block are gonna be a little bit more punishing. He also has that passive armor up, which is gonna decrease some of the damage that you're dealing, which he gets after throwing special attacks. So it can be ideal to wait on throwing your special attack until after that starts to go away. However, then you are wasting time in the fight and it does decrease your window for dealing more damage. If you do crit, it does deal a lot of damage through the armor up. And you're gonna see that here with this next special two, which we're using to push him over two bars of power. We land that last crit, so it does deal good damage, but the first two hits were not crits. And so the damage did suffer quite a bit. Now, this is where the first devastation happens still before we've realized that I have a five star on the team. And he, I get him back up against the wall and he just kind of turtles up. So I wait for him to throw a heavy or attack or something and he doesn't. So then I finally dex back and right as I dex back, 
he attacks in and clips me. He hits me with his light attack, stuns me, and then the next hit does so much damage. That was so depressing because I then lost all my charges and all my furies. It only took a couple of fights to get enough furies to really start doing a little damage. I believe it only took another uh, five or six revives, which is not that bad considering the whole run as a whole uh but we did get it done and man was that a sigh of relief to see it done get that one five star six stone and those five four star rhinos which is definitely not worth it on its own but thankfully it's a karina's challenge we get the rewards but it's not there it's not done i was so devastated and then i realized it i did not have all four stars.